So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a punch animation to your character. So when you hit like a key, like the B key, boom, you can do a punch. That's pretty cool. So let's test that out on this unsuspecting zombie over here. He sees I have no weapons. He's going to try and eat me. I'm going to punch him. There we go. All right. We just killed the zombie with our punching. So if you think you want to add this to your game, I'll get a fresh world and you can follow along with me. All right. So here's my fresh world. Let's start by making an animation. So let's go to plugins, uh, go to rig builder. And I'm going to make an R15 because that's my character. And I'll do man rig. All righty. Boom. There we go. And let's go to animation editor, click our, our dummy and go ahead and give it a title, the animation, a title. I'll just call it punch. Now the most important thing, hit these three dots and then hit set animation priority to action. If you don't set it to action, it won't work when you hit the key. All right. So now I'm just going to save this again. That saves it inside the dummy. We want to do more than that, but let's get going here. Oh, just give us a copy. Let's add some keyframes. So I'm going to add a keyframe to the leg in case I move it during my animation. I'm going to go to this torso. It's kind of hard to get right there, the lower torso there. I'll move that. Yeah, lower torso, upper torso. That's easy to get. I move it back. So I'm just making keyframes along this zero frame. So it's going to be a start. That's going to be my start position. There we go. Looks good. All right. Now this is our timeline, right? It's in frames. If you go over here to this gear, it'll have your frame rate as 30 frames per second. I'll just change it to 24. It'll be a little bit of a quicker animation. And so now I have 24 frames per second. If you want to change your units, this is a timeline units. I have mine in frames. You can also do frames seconds or seconds frames. All right, but I like, I like it in frames. So let's go over to the sixth frame in the sequence and I'll take my arm and I'm going to move it up. And the reason I'm going to move it kind of high, I'll put it here. It'll be easier to kind of move it this direction, right? Which is not going to be easy because now it's on an angle, right? So now it's kind of hard to figure out which way to go. Move this red, ah. move this red. There we go. A little more, a little more. That's pretty good. I don't want it to come quite across because I'm going to move the torso a little bit too. I'm going to hit the lower torso. Did I get the lower torso? I'm going to step into it a little bit with that. And then I'm going to get the upper torso. I'm going to step into it a little more with that. There we go. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good animation, I think. Let's get our beginning frames. See these frames right here? Right click, copy selected. Let's go to 18 and paste them. Paste keyframes. Now let's play it. Boom. That's not bad, kind of slow. Maybe we can move our arm, our leg back a little bit on 12. So I went to 12 and there, how does that look? Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. All right, let's save it. Let's export it. You can save it, but it saves in the dummy, which I'm going to delete anyway. But when we export it, pay attention to this part. You have to put a description. I'll just say punch. And when you submit, you're going to get this ID. Very important. Copy this. You can find it on your Roblox page, but it's a real pain. Just go ahead and copy that. It says ID copied, hit close. Now without wasting any time, go down to starter player, starter player scripts, local script, All right? Local script, I'll go paste that ID so I don't lose it. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and make our script for our animation to load it. So local anim instance new animation, uh, animation ID, animation ID for the anim will be rbx asset ID colon, uh, is it forward, forward slashes, control V, 
and that's this number here is this number here, right? I still had it in my buffer, but I always put it there just in case. Just in case I go to copy something else that I forget. Let's get a player, All right? So this is a local script, so we can go game get service players dot local player. All right, and then we're going to get our user input service, and that's game get service user input service uh, local punch key. This is going to be what you press in order to make it punch enum key code. And I'm just going to hit B. You'll notice you have lots of different stuff. So you can hit shift, so you can hit A, you can hit B, I'm going to hit B. All right, and I'll do a flag is finished. This is going to be a debound, so I can't start punching until I finish a punch. True. We're going to start out with is finished being true, so I can punch right away. And now, oh, we need a sound. All right, so we've got a sound variable. Let's go get a sound. Let's go back to our flat terrain. Go to home, toolbox audio punch and that's got a smack nah it's no good three seconds is too long there we go drag it to the world i'm gonna close this dummy right here take this sound i drag it down to our local script all right and that local script, we really need to rename that. Let's call that melee. Melee look for melee is hand to hand or close up combat. We'll say sound. Let's change the sound to punch because we might want to put a kick in here later. Okay. And now I'll get our uh, reference to my sound. Let's say script dot uh, punch. Cool. All right, let's do a function to player animation local function play anim uh, check to see if the is finished flag is true so that we can we can do another punch do a local char would be the player character or like if we're respawning because we died player character added weight right and let's go ahead and get the humanoid from the character was that uh, char wait for child, which is a humanoid. Um, let's get the track. We'll load the track. So we'll say hum. So this loads track and then returns it so that you can reference it. Animation anim. Right, and that should be this anim right here, should be that anim right there. We're gonna load it onto our humanoid, and then we'll play the track. So the track's gonna be slow, so we might need to speed it up. Speed up here. Let's try it though, before we do any speeding up. Oh, uh, not track. What we wanna do is we wanna play our sound. Uh, what is it, sound? play there we go and let's wait a half a second ah, 0.5 and then we'll be we'll allow ourselves to punch again oh you know what I forgot to do I forgot to turn off I forgot to set the is finished flag to false while we're doing this right so make sure you have your is finished flag here set to false then when we get down here It'll be true. You could punch again. Cool. All right. Now I'll do, whoops, local function on action. We're going to get our input, which is going to be our key that we press. And then this game processed. What you want to do with the key, um, if you want to pass it on or not, if you want to absorb the, the event. Well, we're not going to use that, so don't worry about that if you don't if you don't understand. So input key code. If it is the punch key, which is the B, then we'll play the animation. Otherwise, we'll just ignore this whole function. We'll just pass right on through. All right, so we'll get our user input service. When input began, when we hit the B key, 
we're going to connect to on action. Get rid of those two extra parentheses if you got them added. Cool, let's try it. Let's see what we got. Let's go to play. And now we'll hit our B key. Uh, slow. See, it's going, it's making the sound way before it gets there. And it's kind of slow. All right, so let's go here. After you play your track, then you can adjust the speed. That's counterintuitive. I would have thought you adjust the speed before you play it, but it won't work if you do that. All right, let's, we just doubled the speed. Let's try that. And boom, cool beans. Now you might be wondering why I use the left hand because I'm actually going to add an accessory that causes damage. It's going to be invisible. But if you have it on the right hand, you'll have to make the accessory appear and disappear every time you do the punch, which requires remote events and a lot more coding. So I made this a little bit simpler than that. Let's go and make our accessory. I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to go to workspace, hit the plus sign, add an accessory. I'm going to call this punch accessory. All right, in the punch accessory, I can get rid of my dummy. There we go. I don't need a dummy. I'm going to add this ball here because this is going to be invisible, but this is going to be my damage, my damage ball. I'm going to call it a glove. All right, I'm going to move it in my punch accessory. I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to make it invisible. So I'll make it uh, two by two by two. And make sure collisions are off. I'm going to duplicate it. Control D. I'm going to make this the handle, right? And the handle has to be, well, it doesn't have to be small, but let's make it small. Let's make it 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5. Let's make the glove somewhat transparent while we're working with it. Say transparency of 0.5. See that handle? I want the handle, I want the glove to extend out a little bit on the fist, otherwise it's going to be really hard to hit things. So I'm going to click this handle. I want to move it to the side. And then I think I'll even move it. Oh my gosh. Eh, nah, it's good like that. Let's keep it like that. Yeah, actually, I'm going to move it this way a little bit. There. That's going to extend outward of my fist. It's going to be easier to hit things. So in the handle, that's what you need for a Roblox to attach your accessory to your character. But you also need a, an attachment. And this attachment is going to be the left grip attachment. That's going to put it on your left hand. Cool. Uh, let's Go ahead and weld the handle and the glove together. Weld constraint. Hit weld. Part zero, glove. Part one, handle. You can do those in any order. Cool. Let's go ahead and add our accessory to server storage. Go to server script service. Add a script here to put the glove on the characters when they get added. So everybody will have a glove an invisible glove. Not invisible at first, but invisible soon enough. Uh, we'll call this punch manager. All right, it's a regular script. It's not a module script. It's not a local script. It's a regular script. And what do we got to do? Here, most of our coding's done. This is going to be pretty easy. We'll say local SS for server storage, gain get service, server storage, local punch accessory ss wait for child this has to be spelled the same as this punch accessory right here what i'm going to do just to make sure i'm going to copy the name control c and i'm going to paste it that way i don't make any spelling errors and we'll do local uh, function on char added a character will get passed in say local hume and that will be right off of the char. We'll do wait for child humanoid. We'll say local 
punch will be the punch accessory and we'll clone it so everybody can get one hume add accessory accessory is kind of a hard word to spell punch cool now let's do a local function on player added player will get passed in and then we'll say player will hook up the character added and connect it to on char added that's pretty good game players player added connect on player added that should add our glove let's try it out yeah there it is boom see that it gives you a little extra extension so when we add our damage script we're gonna have to make sure that we're not hurting ourselves because we are touching it right and you may want to check to make sure you're not hitting your teammates but i won't do that because it takes too long um let's go to our glove and hey, where's our glove our glove is in server storage punch accessory open it up go to the glove here add a script and this script is going to be damage All right and this is going to be a pretty easy script it's a regular damage script the only thing we're, do we're going to do is we're going to just check to see it's not us that we're hurting so we'll say local glove and that's script dot parent local we'll say char that's that's you whoever's holding the glove we should call this uh like my char or something all right so we'll say script dot parent so script dot parent is the glove another dot parent is the accessory another dot parent will be the character when it's attached so we need three levels here and we'll say local can punch we we'll do a little debounce we'll do our on hit right here local function on hit this will be the other part that we're that we're, we're hitting let's see if that other part has a humanoid other part parent fine first child that's a whoops humanoid make this a little smaller so you can see it there you go see the whole thing we'll check to see if the humanoid exists and if the other part parent that's the part you're hitting is not equal to my char yourself and can punch is true then let's make can punch false hume take damage and i'm going to give it like 30. we'll wait 0.5 seconds so it'll get like multiple multiple scores on one punch and then can punch will be true all we have to do now is get our glove touched event connect it to on hit now we should be set let's go to our go in our world here let's get our glove and our handle and make it totally transparent we'll set it to one now we won't see the glove now let's add a zombie to test it out on toolbox models hurry 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 it's not like i'm making a video or anything oh there we go and put the zombie here play there's our zombie we can punch let's check it let's check it out come on zombie you want some of this boom 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 boom, boom. yes there you go Woohoo! let's check to make sure we don't have any errors in our output window oh that'd be sad nope looks good though punch all right so let me know if you have any questions and i will see you in the next video